Hello and welcome to yet another edition of the program PWD and the Society. Basically, we talk about the activities, life achievement, ups and downs of people with disability. I am your host, Fauzi Yelukman. You know, it is said that the greatest disability in the society is when the society is unable to see the ability in women. Hence, that's very, very bad. With that in mind, we're going to be talking about the inclusion of disabled women in politics. Why are we not included? What have we done wrong? Who is to blame? Who isn't seeing us and who isn't supporting us? And with me in the studio today is a very, very important guest. I say she's important because she's very much important to me. I look up to her and I follow her bits by bits. She's a human rights activist. She's a founder, a mother, and a very, very, very good leader. She's the president of the Network of Women with Disability. And I must admit, even though she doesn't want me to say it, but she's actually the founder of Cedar Seed Foundation. I'm sorry, I have to say it. But before that, I know you're like eager to see my guest. But before I show you my guest, because she's special to me, I'll take you on a quick break and we'll be back right now. Welcome back. I hope you had a wonderful time with the little break and I hope you have your pen and pencil and papers ready because today we will be discussing a lot. Like I said, I have with me here a very, very important person in person of Miss Lois Outer. Mm -hmm. Miss Lois Outer. Yeah. Why do I keep calling you Mrs. Lois Outer? <laughs> I actually wanted you to like do that yourself because I love it whenever you do that introduction. Uh, Welcome to the show. It's very you. nice to have you. Thank you very much. I hope it wasn't a bumpy ride. No, no, no. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mrs. Yeah, okay. Lois Outer. Can you please tell us? I know about you. I know a lot about you, but can you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Mm. My name is Lois Auta. I'm the founder of Network of Women with Disabilities and Cedar Seed Foundation. And why I founded those organizations is to give a voice to persons with disabilities not just persons with disabilities in general, but women and girls with disabilities because we are the most excluded, we are the most sidelined from the society agenda, we are the most underrepresented, and we go through daily challenges. Is it access to infrastructures, access to information, just like right now that we're here it's a very good program we're doing but some of us at home cannot understand what we are doing because lack of sign language interpreters yes so we need to give rights to persons with disabilities and that's what our organization is all about to advocate and promote disability inclusion oh, i like that you're really making me feel special already <laughs> you know, anytime i'm sitting close to you i always have this need of specialty and feeling like that like that uh, but then auntie lois mm -hmm. what is it with women's participation in politics mm -hmm. what do you think is the perspective of the society mm -hmm. 
when it comes to disabled women in this politics? It is so sad to mention that women and girls with disabilities participation in Nigerian politics or in the political sphere is at a zero percent mm -hmm. level of participation because of the factors that affect us whenever we come out to aspire for elective positions the competition, the perception, the challenges, they are many, they are enormous. So what do we do as a society? What do we do as a media institution? What do we do as civil society organizations to ensure that our voices are given to us, our rights are given to us? And our space yes. are reserved for the full participation of women with disabilities in politics. Generally, women in Nigeria are aspiring for 35% affirmative action. Yes. In the Nigerian Disability Act, Section 30 mentions that we have the right to participate in decision-making processes. In the country. But how can we participate? The provision in that document is just 5%. But I want to sit here in this television station and say categorically that we want 10%. Because if we are able to get the 10% reservation of opportunities, appointment, elective positions, yeah. it will go a long way. Exactly. Yes. So let's start with 10%. If women are asking for 35, we, persons with disabilities, are asking for 10%. 10% only. So Mr. President, and your team, policy makers, managing directors, whoever you are, whatever position you're holding, please don't forget to include an agenda for persons, persons with disabilities, disabilities. Especially, especially women with disabilities. Oh my God, see the way we're just thinking, <laughs> because women, like, I feel women are underrated, mm -hmm. especially women with disabilities. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, I feel, is it that the security, uh, sorry, <laughs> why do I keep saying security? Is it that the society sees more to us or at least care that when our capacities explode, they won't even be able to take it or what exactly it is? Because you already run for election, mm -hmm. a political, how was it? How was your journey? Oh. <laughs> It was an interesting journey in 2019 when mm. I ran for House of Representatives here in the FCT. Okay. Amak Buari Federal Constituency. Yes, it was full of good moments and bad moments. Okay. One of the bad moments was the factors, the barriers that tried to stop me. And what are those factors and barriers? structural barrier yes. because there were some areas that I could not have access to being a wheelchair user mm. you had to cross a river before you get to where your people are so at that moment I couldn't go so my team members had to be the one to go doing that another big challenge was a language barrier uh, FCT is the land of Bagis people and other languages. And when you get there, you cannot speak Bagi, and some of them don't understand English. Oh, so I there was imagine. a gap in communication. communication. Another one was inadequate funding. I could not 
completely compete with my male counterpart because they have the resources, they have the connections, they have other factors that were stopping me. So I could not really do it as expected. I'll never forget when I was on a live radio interview with other male candidates yeah. from two different parties. We were three and I was the only female during the interview. Yeah. When someone called in and said, yes, he had hope on the male candidate, but for me, I should go home and see. Wow. Why did he say so? Because of perception, attitudinal barrier is a huge challenge because since he had I'm a woman with disability yes not just a woman with disability the barriers yes so as a woman as a woman with disability the barriers I am triple jeopardized the same goes to every woman with disability in Nigeria and any part of the world challenges are enormous so what was the good moment the good moment was even though the challenges the difficulties the barriers the problems tried to stop me but i never deterred i move on i competed i ran till election day Doing that alone has placed my name on INEC database. I was on the ballot paper as yes. the first woman with disability hmm. that ran with 4,080 candidates wow. nationwide. So this is a history that was made, a record that was break, that was broken, yes. and the capacity to challenge the status quo so i'm a woman of the first yes i was also the first woman with disability that was named a young global leader of the world economic forum from africa wow not just in nigeria not sub-saharan -Sub africa but the whole of africa so you could see women with disabilities breaking the ceiling i can talk and talk look at you you're doing amazing work mm. in this media institution grace jerry is doing well with Inf inclusive friends association um patience dixon is doing well with advocacy for women with disabilities initiative mm -hmm. there are many is it Barista Katrin Eddy, the first female lawyer with, with hearing, hearing impairment, impairment in Nigeria, the mm -hmm. first. So we have the capacity, we have the passion, we have the commitment, we have the credibility, we have the competency, we also have the character. Yes. But we lack opportunities, we lack the support, and we also lack the platform to be able to thrive independently yes. without asking for this 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 and that exactly, exactly. <laughs> bringing us to that mm -hmm. do you think it's the fault of the society the media or the government for not creating enough awareness because i believe if we had strong awareness, mm. those people wouldn't even dare put us in the spot. Why is it that way? Yes, for me, media houses are doing well for persons with disabilities. I was really, like, I was really rooting in my mind, waiting for you to say that. Don't yes. forget again, 
you have been watching us on global tv channel 276 on star time and you just had what mrs lois out has said media are doing a whole lot please keep that in mind and i hope you're writing it down as you were saying sorry for cutting you short no, no problem. yes during my 2019 elections media institutions gave me a lot of visibility is it on a live tv program live radio program some newspapers gave me a whole pitch to write about my profile my manifesto and recommendations so in a week at times i go to five or more than different media stations talking about myself and what I want to do if I am elected. Yeah. So media have done a lot. lot. Look at me and you today. You invited me for free. I'm not paying anything. Mm. I'm not paying any dime. But you want people to hear about what I did before and what I plan to do in the future. This is good. This is what we want to see. And I pray for more resources for media houses. Amen. I pray for more opportunities and platforms Amen. to be able to do more for persons with disabilities amen to that. women with disabilities in politics. A very big amen yeah. to that. <laughs> so that, do you think it's the government or the society? Mm government yes government is a public um, institution media is a private institution. institution so government have policies but those policies did not stop media from supporting persons with disabilities so I want government to continue to encourage media houses that are supporting persons with disabilities by giving them more bonuses, by providing policies that are, ease, that are easy, that can be managed according to their budget, according to their plans and according to how they want to support organizations of persons with disabilities or persons with disabilities in politics exactly yeah well there you have it we have been talking to mrs lois Auta of say the foundation and the president of network for women with disability we'll take a little short break and i hope you'll be learning and understanding more about women in politics with disability we'll see you after the break stay tuned Welcome back, like I usually say, I don't know, I just love saying this. Welcome back and you're watching us on Global TV channel 276 on Star Time. You're watching the program PWD and the Society with me, of course, your host. Oh my God, see, I've said that repeatedly, now my voice is choking. And I don't know, I just don't get tired of saying that. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome and I hope your papers are really close to full because trust me you're going to be flipping a lot more pages 
because we're not done. Mrs. Lois, how has your journey been, please? We want to know. How has your journey been getting women to come out and like represent themselves, expose themselves to learning opportunities, bearing it all out? Because I've had instances where at first I was scared of coming out. I feel, will I be accepted? Will people see me? Why is it that the society sees my disability before seeing me? Mm. How have you been able to get women to come to you like that? Because I don't know, you just flow a lot with women. <laughs> yes, first of all, I'm a woman. And secondly, there's this saying that People always say that women don't support women, but I disagree with that statement because these days there are many women groups helping each other, supporting each other yes. in agriculture, in politics, in businesses, entrepreneurship and other sectors of the economy. So after running for election, I saw how women groups supported women. Each other. So it inspired me to set up a network of women with disabilities. And within a short period of time, we have over 400,000 um, 400 women and girls with disabilities in a WhatsApp group wow. where we discuss issues that concerns us. These women are receiving training on monthly basis mm. depending on the topic. Sometimes we go with health and wealth. Sometimes we go with NGO setup. Sometimes gender-based violence. Sometimes political participation mm. and the rest. And it all makes them come out mm -hmm. to talk? Yes, we share ideas in the group. Wow. At times we use online, at times we do physical meetings. Mm. So women, just like I said, they are triple jeopardized. Yes. First as a woman, secondly as a woman with disability, lastly from the society, the barriers that she faces on her daily life. Because I don't know for some reason, Thank God for people voicing out now. Mm -hmm. I don't know. They feel women should be in the kitchen. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. I disagree. Oh, like some people say, <laughs> the other room. Mm -hmm. I mean. So, women are capable. They are good managers of the offices. And do you know, women generally can contribute 21% of any country's GDP if she's given the opportunity. And for persons with disabilities, they can contribute 7% if they are supported yes. economically. Given so why won't we use these numbers that we have? We need to start talking to each other. Yes. We need to bring all hands on deck and say, okay, Fauzia, what can you do? What can you offer? Where does your passion lie? Excellent. We want to know and we want to work with you. Madam Lois, what can you do? Let's talk to each other. Let's share ideas. And let's begin to support each one of us according to our passion, according to our needs, and according to our challenges. You know, as a woman with disability, you go through infrastructural barrier, mm. institutional barrier, yeah. medical barrier, and communication barrier. There are many. Is it attitudinal barrier? Mm. I mentioned about the yeah, attitude yeah. of someone. And I wonder why the government isn't doing anything about it. Yes. Like, how do we make the government see it? Like, if what would you want the government to do about it? How would you want the government to come? Yes, government need to set up 
Task Force on the Implementation of Nigerian Disability Act. We have the provisions already, all these issues I mentioned, they are captured in Nigerian Disability Act. The transition period is ending January 2024. Five years period, yes. four years gone. We are in the fifth year. And many offices, schools, mosques, churches, workplaces are inaccessible to women with disabilities. I'm happy that this building has a ram at the entry point. I don't know about the exit point. Everywhere. Uh -huh. So we should be able to emulate organizations like this. You, sh you should have a ram. When you're employing, reserve that 5% opportunity for graduate with disabilities. We have many graduates in our community. Exactly. We are capable, we can do the job exceedingly well if the opportunity is given to us. We can become Nigerian's president. We can become Senate president. Exactly. We can become Speaker of the House. Exactly. We can become Governor. Yes, we can. Deputy Governor, whatever position, we can make it happen. And exceedingly well. But we need to remove this board. We need yes, to remove it. Yes, yes. Yes. I'm so glad you mentioned that. To, I'm, I'm really glad you see. mentioned the board because we need to focus on who the board mm -hmm. should go to. Yes. So lastly, Mrs. Lois, mm -hmm. is there anything concerning the board you would want to tell Mr. President here regarding women inclusion in politics? Yes. It is so sad that the number of women in the political sphere is decreasing. Instead of increasing, it's decreasing. So as the president of this country, we appeal to you that in the appointment you're making, please reserve many spaces, not just few spaces, many spaces for women, reserve spaces for women with disabilities because we can do the job. We are only asking for 35% for women, and 10% for women with, with disabilities. disabilities. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Well, again, for the last time, you have been watching us on Global TV Channel 276 on Star Time. And don't forget, you are watching the program PWD and the Society. I hope your pen and papers are filled up with more words of wisdom and acknowledgement that women with disability can do more, should do more, and definitely do more. See you again next time, same station, same time. I remain your host, Fauzia Lukman, and with me here all the while have been Mrs. Lois, Lois Alta. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. See you next yeah. time. Bye. Bye.